Welcome to Inside Sim Racing. I'm Sean Cole. And I'm Tom Hackey. And we are here to take a good look at a Logitech G27 wheel, which, I don't know, it seems like a dated wheel nowadays with so many T500s and Fanatic wheels on the horizon. It's not looking as mighty as it once was, is it? No, but this one, if you notice, is heavily modified. Mm -hmm. This is the ARC Team Mod E to the G27 wheel. Yes. And this is not your everyday mod. No. Um, this is taking a wheel that many consider, well, I'm going to say it's arguably one of the better wheels on the market, but again, it is a little long in the tooth. And with some of these new wheels coming out with some super amounts of power, uh, I don't think that was the reasoning behind the mod, but it certainly puts it in that same class as some of these newer wheels. Mm -hmm. So let's talk a little bit more about the differences between this mod and a regular G27. I mean, the obvious that we mentioned, the fans. The fans. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you also have a switch here, which becomes a on and off switch, mm -hmm. which we'll get to later. There's a little fuse that is put in as well. And the rest of it is all cleverly kept inside of the case. And the entire case comes apart and you're gonna be removing resistors, capacitors. Tiny little guys that you can't even really see. No, they look like sesame seeds That's almost. right, yeah. You're gonna be adding a new power supply, a booster, a mm -hmm. whole new wiring system to it and then it would be the modified version. So as you can see, there are a lot of parts involved in this, and we'll get to all that later. But Tommy, why don't you take us through the different models or levels of the mod? Sure. Uh, the most turnkey solution that they have is uh, $950, and that's a brand new G27 with the ARC wheel mod, not the pedal mods. Right. So you might as well throw in that $160 bucks and yeah. get the pedal mods as well, so yeah. you're not sitting there with stock pedals. I would recommend that. Yeah. And, um, and that's, yeah, again, $950. Bucks. You don't have to do anything but give them money, and they give you a wheel and pedals. That is a lot of money. That It's some dough. So what if I don't have that kind of money? Well, they have, an, <laughs> they have uh, three more options, actually. Uh, one is you send them your wheel, and they will mod it and send it back to you. That's $442. I'm going to stop you. I wish I had done that version, but go on. Please continue. <laughs> yes. And then the next down is the do-it-yourself kit, which comes with all the parts, uh, but they send the parts to you and you go adventure style on your wheel. And that option that you decided to do is $340. And a lot of fun. And depending on your level of success, <laughs> yes. And then the final option is only $192. Uh, they just send you the hardest to find part, which is the booster. Uh -huh. And then you source all the parts yourself, which aren't that hard to find. They're capacitors and resistors and you just pick them up at a, an electronic store. Okay. And then again, mod it yourself. All so. right. So, and they give you all the instructions on how to do it as well. Yes. Oh, yes. Which the kit I did also came with all the instructions and everything I needed except for the tools. And, and I'm going to tell you, I thought I had a pretty good electronics background, a lot of soldering in my past. Yeah. And I thought, no problem. And when I ordered, I will say, they sent me the instructions and said, are, are you sure? Are you sure <laughs> that you want to do this? That's how you know. And I, I should have taken a little more time. I probably could have figured out that I shouldn't. The other thing I'm just going to say, you know, if you think of this as a soldering iron, or that as a soldering or iron, this. then you probably or might not have the skill to do this project. Because a real electronics person would think this is not a soldering iron. This is not a tool of the trade, nor is that. You no. can solder wires, but this kind of project requires a soldering station, I would recommend. Yeah, with variable heat control. Yeah. And, yeah. You're going to need a, a magnifying lens to see some of these little pieces. Definitely. So if, if any of this, if you know what I'm talking about, then you probably are good enough to do it. And if this is sort of something you don't understand what we're talking about. Send your will to them. I would Send definitely it. recommend. So now let's talk about what I went through in assembling this mod. The instructions were very clear. Uh, <laughs> and I am not great with instructions. I used these original tools, went and got the proper tools. I had some real problems taking some of the resistors. Uh, there are eight pronged things. If anyone doing it, solder four sides together, and then you can lift the one side. Yeah. It's not one prong or at a time. Exactly. Or you'll tear the board up it's like I did. It's a great soldering tip. Just put a bunch of solder in there, get it all liquid, and then lift it up. Um, the other thing you can see is it's a little rough around the edges here. I've kind of painted it to help it. It's, but a, it's a beautiful glue job, Sean. Yeah, and mm -hmm. they're not real straight. So uh, these guys, when you see the version they do, it's beautiful. Mine is not beautiful, but it is functional. Hey. Um, I did put a little video showing you all the steps. It took me a couple of days to actually do all the processes. So why don't we go ahead and check that out, and uh, we'll be back after that.
Tamiya's extensive lineup of radio-controlled vehicles provides hobbyists with the joy of running exact replicas of their favorite car, tank, or off-road vehicle. Another attraction of these vehicles is their use of high-grade materials such as nylon resin, carbon fiber, and polycarbonate. With precise mechanical systems, the maintenance and adjustment of the various components as well as performance upgrading with optional parts allows for truly competitive racing. For more information about Tamiya, visit us at www.tamiyausa.com. Open Wheeler is not just another racing seat. It is made with the input of real racing fans who know the mechanics of racing. The Open Wheeler can be used by almost anybody, from a small child to a fully grown adult. Just like the seat in a real car, Open Wheeler has a wide range of adjustable positions, just like a real car, including the angle of the seat up and back, and the pedal distance and wheel height. Open Wheeler is super light and only weighs about 50 pounds, and it's really easy to move around the house with its built-in wheels, and it folds down for easy storage. Welcome back to the show, and as you can see, there was a lot that goes into this. It probably took me, well, the way it worked out, it took me a couple of weeks. <laughs> I, at the midpoint, thought I had destroyed everything. The guys at ARC, actually, we, you sent them some incredible high-res photos. Yeah, it's really hard to impress <laughs> upon you the scale of what we were working on. I mean, we were working on millimeter scales, yeah. and, and we had to take some really tiny, tiny macro pictures of all these traces, and they You're showed looking at you, a board. Yeah. yeah, and they showed you where to jump it because you, in fact, did bugger something up. Yeah, I tore the entire pad off of the board, mm -hmm. and we had to, like, well, they traced the wire for us and said, well, now you're going to have to solder over here instead of over here. What a nightmare. Um, and, you know, and I, I, I want to reiterate, this is like my G27. This that, is your baby, yeah. And, and the thing's like dead. I couldn't use it the whole time it was down. And it was in much jeopardy. I thought I'd killed it at this point. Yeah, it, it wasn't looking so, good. But they were real quick to help me out with that. So they made it easy. Mm -hmm. Got that all put together. And you'd think that would be the end of the story. And you'd fire it up and run the thing. How'd that go? Um, that actually didn't go very well either. Um, I and my confidence in my ability to do it actually went to start it up and I don't know if I can even explain the day and how it went any better than this video right here. So we're back for another version of plugging in the wheel and I am about as afraid as I've ever been doing a review. First time had no power, now I'm pretty confident I've got power in the wheel but I am not very confident in my abilities in this whole project. I've made a lot of mistakes and uh, as you can see I got my safety glasses on which I'd recommend. I've got a fire extinguisher because I don't know what's going to happen. Uh, and right here, I've got the plug that's going to hopefully power this thing up this time. And I have no idea. I'm actually a little afraid, but I'm going to go ahead and do it. So, G27 mod by ARC. Well, that was less than exciting. All right, let's try a... Uh... Oh. Oh. I do have fans this time. That's better. I don't have a green light. Should I plug it in? Should I plug it in the computer? Yeah. All right. Oh, man. Holy shit. It lives. It works! Badass, dude. Feel this. It's blowing air out those vents. Dude, I can't believe it's on. Can you? <laughs> <laughs> you dark. <laughs> I'd like to apologize to the uh, folks at ARC for being a dope. Seriously, blame me. So after a lot of work, you can see we finally did get this monster up and running. You were and a little uh, skittish there. You didn't trust yourself after all those uh, mix-ups, huh? Not at all. You know, all I know about capacitors is like, you can blow those things up. <laughs> and none of this had gone well. I was convinced that nothing but smoke and fire was going to come yes, out of it. Yes, I right? don't blame you. <laughs> but it did work. And uh, why don't we tell them about some of the things we loved about this wheel? All right. The first thing that is so noticeable is the incredible amount of speed on the wheel. You start it up, you press that power switch, and it spins at a velocity that I have never seen out of any wheel. 
Yeah, um, well, even the T500 kind of slows itself down when it gets right? to the end. This thing is just, like, just yeah, loose. Do not put your hands near it. No. Do not let family or friends near it. <laughs> it. It could hurt somebody for sure. Hide your kids, hide your wife. And that takes us to the next thing, and probably the whole point of the mod, and that is the incredible amount of power. You see it in that startup, mm -hmm. and the first time you grab it, if you haven't changed your force feedback settings, it's double. Uh, that is what it is. It is. It, it, it very much feels that way. Mm -hmm. um, and that translates into the force feedback being much stronger. And some people would say that's a pro, and some people would say that's a con. <laughs> Since it was the point of the wheel, uh, job achieved. Uh, it's definitely more noticeable. All of the effects that you're used to from the Logitech wheel are even more noticeable and happen sooner, quicker, and yeah. definitely. And you know what else? It looks awesome. I agree. Even though I did a rough job on mine, it's so blatantly a modified wheel. So if somebody came over and they're a Sim fan and they're like, hey, uh, what's that? Oh, yeah. That is that is not a stock G20. Exactly. No, it is not. Well, and I love that all of a sudden these vents in back are functional. Yeah. You know, it's and like actually blowing a lot of air out of there. It actually blows air out of down here and everywhere. Yeah. But I, I love that too. And that was very clever on their part. Yeah. The other thing for me that I love is that this is still a PS3 compatible wheel. So despite how heavily we've changed it, it, it works just like it did. Your PS3 is going to see it as a G25 or a G27, depending on the wheel. Your PS, uh, your PC is not going to notice a difference software-wise. Yep. So you know what? And the other thing is, this is still a G27, yeah. which is the tried and true, you know, never breaks down wheel. Yeah. And and that's there's something to be said about that. I don't know if there's a more reliable wheel in sim racing. I agree. And with all these more higher end wheels coming out. It gives this one a fighting chance, and uh, yeah. again, with the reliability behind it, it could be a good equation. Yeah. All right, so now it's time for some of the cons. Um, number one being it is expensive. It's beyond expensive. It is uh, expensive. Uh, depending on how your dollar exchanges, here in America, it's ridiculously expensive, yeah. I have to say. Yeah. So that's going to uh, change everything for mm -hmm. me. The other is it is a difficult project. So if you're trying to save a little of that money doing it yourself, um, you know, give up a wheel. You're taking a gamble on potentially hurting your wheel, although the ARC guys will probably make sure you've worked it out right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but it's difficult and it's going to take you some time. Uh, another thing for me is these fans, which are very necessary to cool things, are really loud. Now, I play in headphones, so for me it wasn't that big of a deal. You know what, though? I can feel it. Can yes. you feel it in the yes, wheel? you can. I can feel the sound or the vibration of those, those fans Absolutely. through the wheel. And, and you could almost call that a con as well, because that's something the Logitech didn't have before. Yeah. The other thing I'm worried about is longevity of this wheel. Um, you're literally doubling the voltage to these motors, mm -hmm. and that's what you're doing. I mean, you're just yeah. pumping more bolts through these motors to make them stronger and doing a couple little workarounds to make it not explode <laughs> but but you know we've never put this much power through this wheel before and i'm not sure that the plastic gear drive in here can, can handle that but I'm, yeah. i don't know i mean it's always been a hardy wheel so yeah. hopefully it will last long i mean we can't possibly put it through that much in a short time frame but i agree that's something that would definitely be a concern yeah so um that pretty much does it in terms of pros and cons next up is the rev scale mm -hmm. and uh, i'll go ahead and give it the number and go it's it. going to be a little harsh uh we're giving this a seven out of ten and I'm going to tell you, it's the expense. Uh, throw the money out, and it's a, it's a fine mod. Absolutely. Um, but at that kind of money, you're not changing the wheel. I mean, it still drives like a Logitech. There's so, still that chatter, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, and until that's cured, it's still a Logitech, and, and you know, I don't know how much I want to put into that. Yeah. I was uh, driving down the straight, and, and that dead zone, I could find that dead zone and let go, and it wouldn't do anything. And then as soon as it hit a bump big enough to throw it off of that dead zone, it would snap the wheel both directions. Right. It was like, whoa, that dead zone really is a big, a big problem. It is, especially when you get it stronger like that. Yeah, yeah. So um, one thing I will say, these guys, when they first started making these mods, they are putting them in F1 cockpits. They are bringing in pro drivers. If anybody remembers my interview with Townsend Bell, you could just see his arms twitching because yeah. he had that Frex wheel so tight. And I think a lot of guys coming from real life track experience, they want strong force feedback. Oh, yeah. They're trying to use it as a real tool it's to a, compare yeah, to real life tool driving. For them. Yeah. Meanwhile, aliens, you know, I know of aliens who are using DFGTs because there's like nothing behind it. Mm -hmm. We're using zero force feedback. Obviously, it's not intended for those people. And I think that's your, your common sim racer. So, again, that's where the score is. Yeah. So, if you want to check it out yourself, they are at www.f1driving.it. 
And they've got the wheel, the pedal that we reviewed a mm -hmm. while ago, and you can check it all Some out there. Some more cool stuff, like an F1 wheel that mounts on there. That looks incredible. So that's going to do it for the ARC Team Wheel. I'm Sean Cole. I'm Tom Hackey. And we're out of here. Promotional consideration provided by iRacing.com, the ultimate place to race online. The world's finest model manufacturer and leader in RC cars, trucks, and tanks. Go to TaniaUSA.com. And you know what? The other thing that I'm worried about is longevity. <laughs> <laughs> I'm wrong. <laughs> 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 the f the longevity. Longevity. I think that was longevity. It was. Long. Is it spelled wrong? No, this is it life doesn't span. even have that word. Ah. <laughs> uh.